Hi there. Good morning. First of all, I just wanted to say thanks for your patience. We apologize about the technical issues that we had. We just decided it would be better if we just do a video. And uh, thanks for, for staying at home with your coffee ready to watch this. So I apologize for the inconvenience. So good morning. I'm Nicole Thiessen, and I'm the Director of Programming here at the Station Arts Centre. Behind the camera is Josie LaChance. She is our Director of Operations. And my very special guest today is Elizabeth Muirhead. And she has come because we have a fantastic art exhibit on right now. It's called Imagine That. And it is a, I, can I call it a fiber art exhibit? Yes a fiber art exhibit of fantastical proportions. It's unbelievable. Before I get going though, I do want to acknowledge that we're on Treaty 6 uh, territory. So this is the traditional land of the Cree peoples and traditional homeland of the Métis. I also wanted to quickly say that these programs would not be possible without help from our funders. And so I just wanted to say a thanks to the town of Rostern, to Saskatchewan Lotteries, Sask Culture, Sask Arts, and Affinity Credit Union. So thanks so much for your ongoing support. So this is the first artist talk that we have done uh, in a little while, and I'm really excited. And I wanted to hear, uh, first of all, Elizabeth, if you could tell me a little bit about the title of the show, which is Imagine That. Um, what does this title mean to you, just to give us a good context? Thanks, Nicole. The title Imagine That is, uh, refers not to the pieces all being Im imaginary, but I wanted the people to go away from the show thinking, wow, I didn't imagine that that many things could be made with just a felting needle and loose wool. So that was kind of the idea behind it. Although there are a couple of pieces that obviously are definitely uh, more imaginary than realistic, but that was the idea behind it, that uh, imagine, you know, hopefully people would say, I, I just didn't imagine that, that that much could be done with needle felting. Cool. Uh, I know for myself, when I was unpacking this show with our visual arts committee, we were like, what? I can't believe you can do that with felting. Um, because like, I have a very limited knowledge of needle felting. I've done it just a little bit, and I would have no idea that you could stretch the boundaries of this medium so far. So I'm really excited to hear a little bit more about Steph, but first, sometimes I like to get to know um, the artist behind the work a little bit more, and I was wondering when or why or how you got into working with felting um, for your artistic practice? I've been felting for about just over 10 years. I first saw felted work and this was knitted and uh, felted in the washing machine work at my sister-in-law's place. And I was quite intrigued by it and wanted to try it for myself. So that was where I first started was knitting bags and felting them in the washing machine. And a couple of years after that, I decided I want to try doing this as wall art, to present it as traditional wall art. Um, there were no books at the time. Needle felting has come a long way since I first started and has really exploded in the past four or five years. But there were no books. so and there were no classes. So I had to basically figure out things for myself. If I wanted to do something with the felt, I had to figure out, and it was a challenge to, to do that. And I really enjoyed the challenge. And so that's where it all started with, with knitted felting. But then, and I found that I liked the sculptural aspect that I, with needle felting, the dry felting, so that I could do, wall art and add raised portions um, and make it more interesting and the amazing textures. Um, so that's kind of where it started. I love that. That's great. And I love the idea that, um, you know, it just takes a lot of experimentation. So I'm assuming that you were good at knitting and embroidery and a lot of traditional sort of crafts using thread and fiber prior to this? Is that the case or? 
No. <laughs> I, I, I have, I, I knitted, but um, a, a little bit, but uh, this really, I didn't do a lot of craft. I always felt um, creative, um, but for some reason, this just um, spoke to me, th this particular medium. And I had tried painting before, and it was okay, but it didn't uh, uh, speak to me like the, like the fiber art. So, uh, no, this was a totally new experience for me in the past 10 years. There's hope for all of us then. This is, this is what I take away from that comment. So I think it would be fun to kind of uh, start talking about this piece that's on the wall behind us. Um, what I love about this piece is that it's monochromatic. So it is generally all white, white on white. But what's lovely is I find that that really um, highlights the textural bits that pop out of this piece. And this one's called To Wear or Not to Wear. And um, I guess I can ask you to talk a little bit about it, but when I first looked at this, what I loved is that right smack in the center of this piece is a brooch. And that is an unexpected element, a small gem, if you will. Tell me a little bit about this piece. This piece has been in my mind for a long time, and it was really nice to have it come to fruition. Uh, and actually, COVID-19 is part of what did make it come to fruition, because there was no place to wear our jewelry. So, uh, so I, and I always thought, well, it's a pity that we put it away and don't enjoy it when we're not wearing it. So that's why uh, the brooch is removable, not during the exhibition, but uh, at other times it's removable. So you can take it off, wear it, and then put it back on and enjoy it as part of your artwork. I wanted to do the piece all in natural colors of wool, all in creams and whites, and put as much texture as possible into it. And it's all done in geometric shapes. If you'll notice, everything is squares, circles, triangles, uh, so everything is geometric. I also wanted to make the individual elements, well, the design echoes the radiating spokes of the brooch. But I wanted to make the individual elements um, raised enough that they would throw shadows. I wanted it to really pop from a distance. Um, because I wanted to do that, this is also, this is on a very heavy felt. This is uh, about a half to three quarter inch uh, heavy felt that was custom made for me. And then it's built up around the edges that's a beautiful slub coil yarn that runs along the, uh, the outside border um, that is a hand spun yarn. I did not, ha I do spinning, but that uh, is beyond my expertise. So that's a beautiful hand spun yarn from Britain. And it's, it was a fun piece to do um, just from the textural point of view, to think how many different textures can I put in with just the monochromatic colors. So that's kind of the background of that. That's very cool. I, I was very curious because maybe I would be the only one to know this at this point, but I know how many pieces you produce uh, over time, which is an incredible amount because when we started speaking about this exhibit, um, you were just kind of working through a lot of the, the pieces at that time. How long would a piece like this take you to make? Could you guess? <laughs> I get asked that question quite a bit. Um, this is a, a quite a number of hours. It was probably over two or three weeks. Uh, and uh, each, I don't sit down and do it all at once and take breaks because all the little circles are made as balls, then cut in half and then refelted onto the piece. So it's very time consuming, but probably over a two or three week span. That, um, what I really enjoy is that the echoes of the brooch, like you were saying, in the shapes, it's almost like you had the brooch as the inspiration and then the piece just developed around it, which is very cool. Okay, well now, 
this piece is like a sculptural piece that hangs on the wall. And then I wanted to move into uh, the full-on 3D sculpture. Um, this piece is called Something Fishy. Uh, and what I think is fantastic about this is I've seen a lot of fiber shows and I have never seen, um, I've seen some 3D work, but nothing like this. It kind of blows my mind. And what I really, I, I'll just say what I noticed about it was that it's like you're fearless. There, there's no rules in my mind. Now, you may have rules that you've set up to follow, but to me, it's just like if you want to have uh, different elements in, some found objects, and I'm going to get you to explain what those blue tubular uh, shapes are. And it's like you're combining all of this to make one full piece, but with the types of material that I would never imagine. Should I just turn it a little more here, just so people can see the details? Okay, you're going to see some lacy bits uh, that I think are on a wire structure underneath. And as I come around the corner here, you mentioned that you used, is it shibori? Is that how I say it? Okay, I want, if Josie can get a close-up on this shibori, explain exactly how you do that. This is shibori felting. It's a knitted piece of uh, fabric. You then take wooden balls and put them in. You can see the shape of where the wooden balls would have been. Put them into the fabric and tie and, and put an elastic band around the base of it. And you can put as many as you want and as close as you want. And then they go into the washing machine and you felt them to the desired amount of felting that you want. They have to be able to hold their shape. Then you take it out, let it dry completely, remove the elastic bands, and then you're left with these wonderful shapes. Um, I act for this, the shape, I filled the shapes with wool to, but in the normal course of things, you wouldn't have to if you did a scarf or something with that. I'm going to turn this a little more, and I'm going to get Josie to zoom in. There are some what look like amazing little aquatic anemone or something like that here in this light blue. Uh, what is that material? So this is actually, and you'll see a, a darker blue here and the lighter blue here. That is actually um, sheathing for wiring in aircraft. It is actually, there are multiple different colors um, to designate what kind of wiring is in the aircraft. And they worked perfectly uh, for simulating anemones or whatever it may be. And because they are um, an open weave, that's what allows you to felt through them and attach them. So they, they can be attached and, and I just, um, pulled in and expanded the ends so that they look uh, like the anemones. That is, okay, so I love that you're mixing in, I guess, found objects almost as well, and I would have never expected that that's what those were. Uh, do you, do you set up any rules for yourselves, like, for yourself when you're, when you're working? Like, I know, uh, you and I have talked, and you said, you know, if you can imagine it, you can make it with needle felting. And I love that because it's like it sets up a challenge for you artistically, and yet it doesn't seem like there's any limits that are stopping you into what you uh, decide to take on. Do you have rules? For this piece, that was one of the absolute joys about it was that there were absolutely no rules. I pulled out of my stash the brightest colors I could use, the most textures. I, that was the only thing I had in my mind when I started is I wanted to make it as full of color and texture as I could. And I didn't look at pictures. I didn't look, so none of this is 
realistic. It's just what I wanted it to look like, and it's um, there wasn't any thing that I didn't seem to work. It, 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 I just started, there was no particular design in mind, and it's just adding things as I went, and it was a joy to do because there were no constraints. I think that is what I, I think you've just said exactly what I find so um, exciting about your work is that it's like you're not allowing yourself to be pigeonholed into one style. If you decide you want to try something different or learn something new or not work off of any kind of uh, reference except for your mind, um, this is testament to that. And I think that's so good for any of us to hear. Um, you know, don't be afraid to just try out new things. Um, I don't know if I have time to talk about this landscape piece. I think I do. Okay, so I'm not going to take too long on here, but on my side, I have this beautiful piece, um, and the title of this one is Reflections, Summer Reflections. And so I guess I, mostly I wanted to show this because it, it is showing the scope of um, subjects that you tackle. So we have uh, what would be a traditional landscape um, image, however, done in very non-traditional um, ways. And uh, I think one of the really neat things is that when I look closely at it, I start noticing little tiny French knots with embroidery that you put on top, and that just gives it that extra textural pop. And also some silver uh, thread in the barbed wire fence. Um, what is it about these types of pieces that inspires you or motivates you um, to work this way? I think I just want to bring something different to a uh, prairie landscape. This is a slough that ended up, I didn't know it was there, and it was about five miles from our place. Uh, it was a huge slough with a gorgeous summer reflection. Um, so I want to bring um, more texture um, to the landscape, to the prairie landscape. And so the clouds have silk noil in them, as well as um, a, a dark blue uh, yarn uh, that creates the shadow. I'm not an embroiderer, I never have been, and so I don't have rules for the embroidery. It's very loose, it's very, um, it's not, um, I just do what looks good in the piece. So the, the French knots are just, they're, they're there just to add interest and to add highlight as well as the stitching on the bottom. And I must have used probably 20 different kinds of yarn in the, in the doing the front of it as well. That also gives me hope because I've tried a little bit of uh, embroidery myself and it seems like I love the idea that there are no rules. You seem to tackle it very well. But like you were saying, I think what's so tantalizing about this piece is the, the contrast between the super fuzzed out pieces and the super sharp focus of that embroidery th thread. So um, between these three pieces, I think that covered so much of the range of what you make. And I, that's what I love about this show. And I think, you know, if any of those of you that are watching from home, um, if you have time in June, make sure you get down to the Station Arts Centre because you haven't seen anything yet. There are so many pieces here, lots of sculptural items, totally different wall pieces, um, and this show is up till the end of June. If you have a group of friends, you could always email me at programmingdirector at stationarts.com and book a private tour. I'm happy to do that anytime. Or you can just come for lunch and have a wander through the gallery. Do we have any questions um, about, okay. Okay, sure. What is your favorite subject matter, i.e. scenery or animals? I don't think, honestly, that I have a favorite subject matter. That's the wonderful joy about it, is doing variety. And that's what continues to keep it interesting, really. 
I was going to ask you what motivates you to work so much day after day, and that kind of answers that question as well. How long does it typically take to create the 3D pieces, which are amazing? Very true. Uh, it obviously depends on the size. If you come out to the exhibition, the squirrel piece took over a month of daily work uh, with the stump and everything. This would be an equivalent kind of uh, time in the studio, uh, at least a month. And sometimes coming back to it, uh, leave it for a bit, come back to it. And, and so, yeah, definitely a month at least, yes. Okay, uh, I just had one last question. I was wondering, as an artist, was the time during COVID of spending time in your in your house um, or studio was that something that you feel like enhanced your practice, or did it work the other way? I was absolutely grateful to my core that I had art during the lockdown and it was a wonderful thing to go into my studio every day, uh, let my mind go into my artistic pieces and lose myself there. So it was a joy to create and uh, uh, kept me going through COVID. So, and I did end up doing, uh, pushing myself a little bit further and doing uh, different things and I, I, I had thought I might. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for coming today. Um, I know people at home are really going to enjoy this. And I think if you're like me, this will encourage you to come down and see all the rest of your lovely pieces. So thanks so much, Elizabeth. I really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.